The next step of performing trend analysis is to combine all the all the date layers that we have into one particular layer. So at the moment I've got individual layers of June 2010, uh, April 2010 and October 2009 and what I'd like to do is bring those all together into one individual shape file. And to do that I'm going to go to Arc Toolbox, I'll go to Analysis Tools, Overlay and I'm going to use the Union Tool. What I'll do there is then add my three layers. So first of all I'll, I'll add them in the correct order. So October 2009 as the, that being the first layer. Then I'll add my April 2010 being the second and June 2010 being the third. So I've added those three layers, added those in and I will then just output uh, an appropriate file name so I'm going to call that one burnt union and I'll run the process when I'm happy with that. So once I've done that process what I'll come up with is a new a new shape file that will be added to your um, to your table of contents. So here we go we've got burnt union and now that contains the information from all those three layers that I've previously created. So if I open the attribute table for that particular um, shape file, you'll be able to see that I now have columns based on each of those layers there. So I've got information in this in this column and uh, the third column here from the 17th of October 2009, and you'll see that if you scroll down through the table, you'll have individual records that either have a value of of three in the grid code or zero if there was no burn in that air in that on that time in that particular polygon. Similarly for the 14th of June 2010 you'll have grid code values associated with that being either zero or three and also for the 27th of April 2010. Now what I'd like to do is to create a particular grid code that's based on the combination of those three dates which will give me some kind of indication on what's happening happening in a particular area at, um, on those three dates but in only one record. So what I'm going to do is to, is to add a field in my attribute table. So I go through the table properties here and go to add field and I'm going to call this burnt code. I leave this as a short integer and leave that precision properties the same there. Actually, I beg your pardon, I'm going to change this to text and I'm going to make this 3. You'll see why in a moment. So I've created that column there called burnt code. Now the reason I needed to make it text is because I'm going to combine the codes from those pre previous three dates. And, and I need them to be combined sequentially. So if I now go right click on that burnt code column and go to field calculator, what I'm going to do is I'll put the grid code in from the first date and I'm going to use the AND symbol to combine it then with the second date and the third date there. So that's giving me an equation which says that burnt code equals the grid code of date 1, with the grid code of date 2 and the grid code of date 3. And if I run that process then we'll see that this column is populated being a combination of those three dates. So what I'll be able to see is any particular polygon that, ha that was burnt on all three dates will then have a value of 333. Any particular polygon like this one to start with we have a burnt code of 300 means that it was burnt on date 1 which is the October 2009 image but having a 0 and a 0 on the other two dates means that that particular polygon was not burnt on the other two dates. So I can scroll down my table there and find find particular polygons which for example were, were burnt on the second date being April 2010 or if I continue to scroll it, I mean remembering that there's 67,000 records here, you'll be able to find find polygons that were burnt on all three dates, for example, so they have a three in all three columns there, or, or a combination of any of those. So what I'd like to do now is to be able to display that appropriately because a code of 333 is a little bit difficult to actually interpret. 
So I'm now going to go into my layer properties. So just right clicking and then down the bottom there I have properties. And what I'm going to do is go under categories, unique values and my I'm going to use the burnt code as the value field that I'm going to map. If I click on add all values, you'll now see that I have the option of all those all those different combinations of the dates when those individual polygons were burnt. So for example, if I look at the first one, a bit with a burnt code of 003 means that it was burnt only in June, which is our third date. So I'm going to say that that is a mid dry season burn. For a code that was burnt only on the second date, which is our April date, will be an early dry season burn. We have 033, which means that it was not burnt in October, but was burnt on the other two dates. So that will be early and mid. 300 was late, as that being that's being the October image that was burnt. 303 is both mid and late. 330 is October and April, so we've got early and late. And 333 is early, mid and late. So that will be a little bit easier to interpret when we've got it in our table of contents. So we'll just see the, the, the names as opposed to the actual code. The other thing that I like to do usually is just to remove the outline from individual polygons because otherwise it appears like the, the whole screen is grey. So I'm going to go to properties for selected symbols and just remove that outline colour for all of those. Now you can change those colour patches individually also if you like. So once I've completed that I click OK and you'll see that I now have an image that's showing me essentially the trend of those individual dates. So I'll be able to tell at, at a quick glance and initially just qualitatively where those areas were that were identified as burnt areas in all three images and areas that were burnt only in mid dry season for example or just late dry